in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am in front of this camera to clear some of the teachings uh, which uh, many people find confused today, especially because of the preaching of the uh, prosperity gospel today. I was just listening to one uh, uh, tape or one uh, video where a powerful preacher was telling we are no more under law, but we are under grace. He was speaking about the Holy Bible. Romans chapter 6, 14. Uh, you are not under the law. That means not under the commandments. So we, in the New Testament, we the people of God, we Jesus people, need not observe the commandments. In other words, Hallelujah. And there are many people who divide Bible into two. That means Old Testament, New Testament. These are division, human divisions. God never divides the Bible as two. Bible is one. Hallelujah. Yes, but later uh, it was divided. Time Books written before Christ and written after Christ. But Bible is one and the focus is Jesus the Lord. Both Old Testament and New Testament. And both are equally important. Hallelujah. Both are considered as God's word. So don't think that with the New Testament, the Old Testament is annulled. There are some gospel preachers whom I call the prosperity gospel preachers who say, we need not keep the commandments of God. I just bring to your mind Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 on verse Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 onwards. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of the letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. We know if you look at Jesus, Jesus kept the law. Even we know he was baptized. Actually, he was known to be baptized. He was God, second person of the Trinity. And that's why John the Baptist asked, are you coming to me for baptism? He said, let the law be fulfilled. Jesus was very particular to keep the law and commandments. I'm not going to detail even to pay tax. Uh, he was paying tax, keeping all the laws and regulations. Uh, and at the same time, we can see uh, Jesus was not a slave of the letter of the law. And about Jesus, we read in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death. Even that on a cross. Hallelujah. This is the obedience of Jesus uh, about law. And Jesus taught the same to us. We read very clearly in John chapter 14, verse 15. The Lord says, if you keep my commandments. These commandments are the commandments you receive from the Torah. From the commandments taught by Moses. He was a Jew. You must know that Jesus was a Jew. He studied law under Gamaliel, a famous rabbi. He knew the law very well, the commandments very well. So that's the reason he said, uh, if you keep the commandments, you will love God. Yes, Jesus kept the commandments of his father and loved God. So too, we should uh, love God by keeping the commandments. 
And in chapter 15 of John, John chapter 15, very clearly the Lord said, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Hallelujah. So Jesus remained in the love of God the Father by keeping the commandments. So if we are the followers of, followers of Christ, we too are bound to do that. At the same time, some of the teachings of St. Paul looks contradictory, although not contradictory. Actually, they are explanatory, uh, giving more light, uh, more explanation about the teachings of Christ. For example, Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 2 to 4. Romans chapter 8, verse 2 to 4. For what the law weakened by the flesh was powerless to do this, God has done by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for the sake of sin. He condemned the sin in his flesh so that the righteous decree of the law might be fulfilled in us who live not according to the flesh but according to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Many people interpret this saying that because Jesus took all our sins on his body and died and paid a penalty on the cross, we are no more under the commandments of God and we are no more sin. There are so many such stupid gospel preachers who make compromises and make people licentious and indisciplined. That's what I say. That's, why what is, that's a chaos we see today in the church. Many people ask, it is not written in the law. It is not the commandments. And then making what are called all kinds of compromises about the law. Here, we must know what St. Paul means. Uh, he was not saying that the law is abolished or finished off. No. Sin is the breaking of the commandment of God. Hallelujah. 1 John 3, 4. So commandment still continues holding good. That's why the Lord said, uh, we must keep the commandment of God until our death. Uh, till the last, when the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we had to uh, keep the commandments without stain or reproach. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 14. As long as we are here on earth, we are bound to keep the commandments of God uh, and love God and continue loving God. Now, when Paul says, we are no more under law, what does he mean? Not under the letter of the law. There is something beyond the letter of the law. That is the spirit of the law. And it is by the spirit of the law, we have to keep the commandments. In other words, we know in the Old Testament and New Testament, the Lord is speaking a law in interiority, a law of the spirit. And uh, uh, that uh, many people do not understand or speak about. We know in the book of Ezekiel, in the Prophet Ezekiel speaks very clearly about it. How the law is not something externally uh, prescribed or written in the book, but it is written in the heart. Ezekiel chapter 11, 19 to 20. I'll give them a new heart and put a new spirit within them. I'll remove the stony heart from their bodies, replace it with a natural heart so that they will live according to my statutes and observe and carry out my ordinances. Thus they shall be my people and I'll be their God. Hallelujah. Very clearly says the law will be written in the heart, not on the tablets, not on papers or catechism book, but in our heart. The dictate to the conscience is the law that is written there by the Holy Spirit. We know Ezekiel chapter 36 speaks about a new heart. The Lord saying, I'll cut away your old heart and keep a new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you. Uh, all of you know that reading. And then 
the Lord says, I will put my spirit within you and make you live by statutes, careful to observe my decrees and commandments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, why the Lord is giving a new heart? Taking away an uh, old heart so that we may live according to rules, law, statutes, and commandments. Because our old self is preventing us to observe the commandments in the heart or wholeheartedly. That's why we need an open heart surgery and to follow Jesus, follow God, and to keep the commandments, and thus to love him. Yes, uh, so Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 27, I was reading to you. You can read that very clearly. And we know God expects, Jesus expects that we be a new creation. All those who are in Christ Jesus is a new creation. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse uh, 17. So we are a new creation. So we become a new creation by our baptism and continually by Holy Spirit. So not the old. And in our heart, the law is written. And in the heart, the Lord will be speaking uh, to the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we cannot make a compromise. We have to keep the law. Paul is not abolishing the law by saying you are not under the law, but under grace. In other words, he was telling, law in itself is dry. It is dead. It cannot do. Law should be in your heart with grace. What is grace? Grace is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Spirit. So you cannot wholeheartedly keep the law and love God without the grace, without the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's the correct way of understanding it. That's why Romans chapter 2, 24, it is written, because uh, chapter 8, where Saint Paul, chapter 8, or chapter 6, sorry, uh, verse 14, which I quoted in the beginning, uh, sin is not to have any power over you. You are not under the law, but under grace. And then the following verse, very near, very clear. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? He's clearing our doubt. Uh, if we are under grace, can we continue sinning? No. All of you should say we should not commit sin. What is sin? Breaking of the law. Hallelujah. So law continues existing. And when we break them, we continue in sin. So we should be uh, under grace means, uh, with the grace, we have to keep the law and commandments of the Lord. So, uh, the Lord very clearly says, for that we have to submit ourselves, uh, each part of our body to the Lord, so that with none of the part of the body, we may commit sin. And some people, you know, simply say, oh, oh it is not written. For example, the commandment says, thou shalt not kill. Recently, one man was telling, Oh, the Lord doesn't say, thou shalt not abort. So we can do the abortion. Hallelujah. This is the way people, what you call, dilute the word of God. Saying that it is not in the law. And some other people, gospel preachers, continue speaking. We are no more law, so we can live as we like. I got, even recently, a man who is teaching catechism officially through website was telling, all will be saved. Man cannot sin. There's no purgatory. All will go to heaven. And there's no hell. Surely to frighten the people, we read about hell. He was speaking publicly. It's a man teaching catechism. Or just deploring such a teaching. Recently he said, there's no more curse. All the curses are taken away by the Lord on the Calvary. Yes, but uh, uh, no more sin, no curse, no consequence of sin. This is what he call the preaching of the prosperity gospel. Uh, I'm sure the Lord will not be happy with that. So that's why there is a confusion in the heart of many people. Uh, so open your heart. Learn, you must know that you have to keep the commandments, not just the letter, but the spirit of the Lord. 
what is the meaning of this law? For example, you shall not kill. The Lord is not telling you shall not shoot or cut the throat of somebody. Much more. The Lord says, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. Yes, you have to go deeper into the meaning of the law. And it must be written in the heart. So that the Holy Spirit in us may lead us. Uh, and then we will observe them wholeheartedly. Yes, in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, we see. Uh, after giving the Ten Commandments, the Lord God said very, very clearly, don't remove even a little part of the law from the book. Uh, uh, no, don't add or subtract anything, subtract anything from it. Deuteronomy chapter 12, 32. And then the Ten Commandments, which we can read in the chapter 5. And verse 6, again saying, when you are prospering, that means when you go to the Holy Land, you have big houses, and you have plenty to eat and drink, and you become rich, don't forget the Lord your God by breaking the commandments of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 7, 9. So God is a faithful God who keeps his merciful covenant down to the thousandth generation towards those who love him and keep his commandments. Hallelujah. So, let's not forget. We know if you look at the world, people who are really prospering, big houses, money, business, they forget God. Poor always cry out to God. So the Lord was giving that warning to the Israelites. When you are in prosperity, don't forget to love God by keeping the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 11. So that God will suffer many blessings by keeping the commandments and loving God to us and to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. Yes, I'll be speaking about it later. So I wish that you understand the correct meaning of Paul saying we are not under law but under grace. Hallelujah. We are under grace to keep the commandments in the heart, the generous say, is not to escape the law. Jesus observed the law and he asked us to keep the commandments. And uh, St. Paul and other apostles also very clearly taught till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to keep the law and commandments without stain or without reproach. Hallelujah. That means when God appears, you must be able to see that we love God. It is by keeping the commandments, we love God. Those who are not subscribed my channel, James Manyakel MSFS, please subscribe. You know on these days, there are many YouTubes and uh, uh, several teachings I'm giving. You want to get to be informed, please subscribe. Close your eyes, I pray for you. Lord Jesus, I thank you and praise you. Bless all those who people who listen to this my talk to clear their doubts about commandments of God. You taught clearly that we must keep the commandments and love God. And you did it. But there are many people who preach the prosperity gospel, abolishing and throwing away your right and honest teaching, saying there is no sin and no punishment, no hell. No purgatory and no curse. You can live as you like. Such a worldly freedom. But we know from the Holy Bible which you taught. Yes, he who commits sin is a slave of sin. We know John chapter 8, 34. Yes, we don't want to be under the slavery of sin. We want to be enjoying the freedom of the children of God by keeping the commandments of God. Real grace is... And real freedom is to keep the commandments of God and love God. Give this awareness to all those who listen to me. And bless them with the Holy Spirit who is love. My children, I keep all of you in the heart of Jesus. To the immaculate heart of Mary and bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.